Right. So one thing we look at in terms of an engineering analysis or design is you look at uh, what level of degree of design or how detailed you want to get. And one of the things that's talked about is, is a truly sustainable design. And what is it? How far do we need to go? And, and the thought we talk about for right now is just some different levels of definitions of, of degrees of effort and degrees of kind of a green aspects of it that, that, that currently is being gone about. The first kind of the rudimentary level is what you would call the code minimum. You know, it's on building codes. Those are standards that are set up by, defined by the governments that says this is the minimum acceptable level that we would have for a building design and some of the things correspond to other parts of engineering aspects. I'm more familiar with buildings, so I'll use those as examples talking about that. So that is your, this, there's a term we use, the catnap, the cheapest available technology to narrowly avoid prosecution. And so that's, they can put that in, you know, your, your builder that built your house or a contractor that's putting together a building and it, it meets the minimum code. So it's, a, it's the minimum acceptable by today's standards of what the design should be. So that's, that's your, just your bare bones, the cheapest, it, it works. And a lot of times, in many ways, that's what you might get unless you, spend, unless you insist on getting something a little bit better. The next level up up that point we might recall you might call it just good design. You can look at that same uh, minimum code level in terms of an energy performance, using as an example, but it, it may be a little bit better in terms of a little better product quality or whatever have you. Talking about say your household an air conditioning unit for your household. Uh, the the current standards are uh, what they call a SEER level, S E E R. Of, of 13 that defines an efficiency level for an air conditioner. Now that is the minimum level that you have to have if you're going to buy and install one in the United States here at this time. That, that's been that way since uh, January of 2006. The house I live in is, is about 10 years old and it has a SEER 10 unit because that was the minimum code at that time period. So if you go out now right now and find the base of the cheapest SEER 13 air conditioning unit and put it in your house is what maybe a typical builder might do. They've met the minimum code that gives you that, that cold minimum level. A good design might be say, well, we want a, a unit that's a SEER 13 unit, but perhaps it's maybe more reliable, it's, it's been a little better parts or equipment, has less maintenance requirements, something on that the sign line right there. That's what you might call a good design. Good design still meets the code, but it's not really, doesn't really necessarily mean it takes account any kind of green aspects to it. The next level up, you might say, would be, say, a green design. There, using that, that your household air conditioner as an example, you might say, well, you can, you can buy, a, say, a SEER 15 unit. A little bit better than the code minimum. You're going to pay a little bit more for it. But, you know, the green design aspect is, is something that, that will be, it's not quite as bad as, as what our current technologies, what you would normally expect right there, because it's, it's taking into account of trying to be a little more, in, a little bit more environmentally friendly. It's not all the way to where you need to go, but it's, it's, it's at least, it's not as bad. That's what some people kind of describe it right there. So you can, you can buy a, maybe a SEER 15 unit and put that in, in your house, and you've got a little bit more environmental friendly. You could call that a green feature. Um, the, the next and the most ultimate level of design is you call it sustainable design. And sustainability, there's different people have different definitions of that, but one of the, the common one that's used, at least again within the, the buildings area aspect of it, is a sustainable design is, is providing for the needs of, the, of our current generation and the things that we expect to have without taking away from the future generations the ability to provide their own needs to. I have a four-year-old granddaughter, and then when she gets to be our age of, you know, looking at wanting to have a house and want to live a life, you know, what we want, what we do in a truly sustainable society, what we've done now won't adversely impact the ability of people what generation or two in the future to provide their own needs. That's that's truly a sustainable design. So how would we get that? Well, and a sustainable design, say for a building, would have the whole building designed such that you know, it uses the minimum amount of energy needed to provide your comfort, your lighting, or whatever you, you need to have inside a building, 
but it's also doing things like you know creating its own energy, renewable energy you know, through photovoltaic panels or solar hot water, or you know if you're in the case where you've got wind resource around you, you're creating that amount of energy and also looking at it's been designed since it made the materials when you need to make a change, you can take those same materials and reuse them with re reuse or recycle those materials again. The whole thing is that that building is sort of like a is a, a cradle to cradle to new creation process of all the materials and then looking at all the energy resources. Use these using water the most efficiently possibly can, such that it doesn't deplete, say, natural aquifers or reservoirs that we're drawing from right there. That is the, the definition of a truly sustainable design and ultimately it's where we're yeah, actually we drawing it. upon some reserves that have, that have been in from this bank of say again energy resources that isn't being renewed and eventually will go away and everybody I think pretty much knows that in the back of their mind they just kind of hope that those days never come. I think personal pain is that we're beginning to see some of the, the all of the whole deals with the energy costs rising and going us. We're, we're seeing that impact of you know the supply and demand. Supplies are, are getting less and demand's gone up. Economics is taking place.